is Dr. Kwame Amponsachi. Ano? His name was almost a household name in the heat of the COVID. He is a programs manager for the expanded program on immunization at the Ghana Health Service. Hello, Doc. Uh, good evening. Welcome to a Point Blank on Eyewitness News. Yeah, so um, we, we understand that the withdrawal, according to the Ghana Health Service, is in respect of econ economic or commercial reasons and that we should not panic. Can you explain further, please? Hello, sir. Hello, my brother. Good evening. Yes, good evening, sir. Did you hear my question? Uh, we understand from the Ghana Health Service that the withdrawal of um, AstraZeneca, the AstraZeneca vaccine, from the global market is a commercial one. I mean, the reason for it is commercial and that we should not uh, be worried. We should keep calm because there's nothing to be worried about. Is that correct? And why is the Ghana Health Service saying that to us? Uh, good evening to, to your cherished uh, viewers or, or listeners. I'm not too sure whether I'm on TV or... Yes, we, we are We are on I'm Facebook and on radio, radio, yes. Right. So, um, yes, yes. So, I uh, guess to follow up uh, from where the Director General left off, we had reports. We also had reports and followed uh, on this issue of withdrawal of um, AstraZeneca on, on commercial basis. And um, for, for, for us, uh, we've, we've also... Been looking at out for other reports apart from what was initially uh, given to us, and we believe that yes, there's no cause for alarm, and I I really side with the, what the director general said initially. Well, um, so so this this announcement by AstraZeneca that it was withdrawing its COVID-19 vaccines worldwide uh, comes months after the the company admitted that the drug could cause very rare but life-threatening injuries. And you're saying that this is not part of the reasons why they are withdrawing from the market and it's purely uh, for commercial reasons and so we should not be worried? Yeah, so uh, the, first of all, you, you recall that when we started the vaccination exercise, there were three key questions that we, we asked. Number one, is the vaccine safe? If, I, if the vaccine is not safe, nobody would even pass it. So, if you recall again, um, WHO working with um, the EMA at the time, that's the European Medicines Agencies and the uh, UK regulatory agencies, had cleared the vaccine for, for I mean, had authorized the vaccine for use. Um, for any vaccine, once it comes into them onto the market, it is still followed up in terms of surveillance. So the various uh, regulatory agencies within each country would also be following up. Um, we will again recall that in 2021, the issue of these clots uh, came up, and uh, WHO issued even uh, they even issued some guidelines on how to manage the clots, and that they had looked at uh, the data from the Global Advisory uh, Committee on Vaccine Safety, and that there were no new safety signals, and that the vaccines, the benefits of the vaccines far outweigh the risks. And so we continue to use the vaccine. If there are any new signals, then of course they would inform us. But so far, we don't have any new safety signals. So this issue of the uh, thrombo thrombotic effect uh, is really not a new thing. It came up uh, uh, somewhere in 2021. I, I see. So do we still have uh, some of these vaccines, the AstraZeneca vaccines, in, in our storehouse? Incidentally, we, we, if you've been following us, we don't even have AstraZeneca because it was not eventually um, authorized for use in the, um, uh, the market authorization holders did not pursue that uh, for commercial reasons because uh, Ghana is, not, is a very small market. Uh, so we, the only vaccine we have uh, for which we, we, I mean, we are used, the only vaccine we are using now is J&J. You've been following us over the past uh, three, four months. I, I see. So, so that's quite uh, some good news or some reassuring news for people who who generally feel uh, uh, that there, there, there's something amiss. But talk no, to us. Fact, we, no, mm, for me, let, let's let's reassure. I mean, there's no cause for alarm. The, even for the thrombotic effects that came up, uh, that became a topical issue in 2021. It was extensively discussed. You recall, it was very, very, I mean, it was discussed quite well. And then the issue came up that these were very rare, rare events that 
could happen within, for every million doses you give, maybe up to about four or five. And so, if uh, again, for every vaccine, you could have this such rare event. It's not just about AstraZeneca. And the, the issue is that it may not necessarily be a thrombotic effect, but it could be other rare events. I see. We also got the news sometime late last week that some new cases of COVID-19 have been reported. What can you tell us about that and how many cases do we have if you have the figures of it? Okay, so I don't have the figures of it, but at least I can give you some um, um, approximations. Uh, we haven't stopped testing uh, for COVID over the past um, six months, let's say five months or so, since January, we've tested over 2,000 samples, out of which about 10% um, has tested positive. COVID has not gone, actually. Uh, you recall in May, somewhere May 4th or 5th, the, the, the WHO declared that COVID was no longer uh, an emergency. That, is, that did not actually imply that the pandemic was over, as opposed to what people think. The pandemic is not yet over. We know that COVID is still around, and we are trying to manage COVID like any other uh, endemic disease that we have. It's come to stay, and so we need to manage it the way we manage any other uh, illness. Will you um, advise the wearing of nose masks as we did in, in the past, given that we are beginning to record new cases? Okay, so um, maybe to add to what the issues are around the new cases, We've had quite some new variants over, over time, and um, manufacturers have directed their vaccines at the new multiple variants. And I believe that's one of the reasons AstraZeneca probably is not even uh, now profiting in quotes in terms of commercial. I mean, they are not um, making any headway in terms of uh, commercial, um, um, as it were, profit. And so they are losing out, in a way, because they are newer vaccines, and probably people are going for the newer vaccines, and uh, that is that is probably informed also the, their decision to resort because there's no the, there's no gain now. Yeah. So 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 what should we be doing? Ask about the, the wearing of no yeah, smart. So for no smart, yes, we still will advise that um, if you are going to places where, uh, especially for indoor activities where you have a lot of people gathering, then. We would still advise that you put on the, the face masks, but of course, in the open, uh, one of the reasons why we, we um, as it were, the face mask was um, uh, probably not no longer enforced was the fact that the vaccines were available and that people, a lot of people, had received it, and so the risk out outdoors was not as, as great as indoors. But of course, the uh, hand washing and uh, Hand sanitizing should be should be enforced, should continue, and should be a household thing for everybody. Because it does not just protect us against the COVID, but many other uh, diseases. I see. Is there any plan to to ramp up vaccination efforts, mass vaccination, booster uh, uh, doses, etc.? Is there any such plans? So, yeah. So one of the strategies of um, managing COVID as Part of us, as I'm mean, as is, is now endemic in quotes, is the fact that we are routinizing it, making it like we give uh, children vaccines. So now adult vaccines. And it's also in line with a, a global push for uh, what we call the, the um, approach to uh, managing, um, not just managing epidemics, but also preventing epidemics in a life course approach. And so at every stage where uh, people need vaccines, we're able to give them. So as part of it, as part of our utilization plan, we also have the periodic intensification of uh, immunization activities for COVID, just as we do for children. And so we will continue to give these, um, uh, we'll do these campaigns as long as COVID remains with us. Do you know about the spread of the new uh, cases we, we, we have recorded? Um across uh, the country uh you know people get uh, ill and of course recover and so over the past um, four five months or so we've had over 200 cases most of them have recovered there's no severe or critical case now we have as at the end of april we had about 
18 or so active cases, but I believe that by now the active cases are being reduced. But basically, I'll say uh, half of the cases are in Greater Accra. They are still in Eating and uh, one or two cases in Ashanti and so on. So the spread is still like it used to be when we started. Usually the densely populated areas are the, the most affected. I also noticed that many people do not or are not particularly interested in going to pay to get tested uh, for, for COVID uh, because, one, they, they think it's expensive and maybe they don't see it as a danger anymore. Is this a concern to the Ghana Health Service that maybe we may have more cases in, in the population than the reported cases? Because these cases recorded, I'm sure, are those which have been uh, uh, tested and, and confirmed, but there could be more. Is, is there a concern to the Ghana Health Service that people may not be testing uh, as well, you want as, them to? As far as we, we are concerned, as far as we know, we've been encouraging the regions to keep on testing like they, they used to do some time back. Um, if you recall again, when we had the H1N1, uh, we, had, we went through a similar cycle. I can assure you that even to date, we we'll still have H1N1 around. And it is because we have sentinel sites where we do the testing. But for COVID, we still encourage all the labs that are scattered across the, the nation and in all the regions to, be, to, to keep on testing so that we know the actual magnitude. So the testing has, has ceased. We still do the test. So, so yeah, so, so the testing, very, very important. We talked about costs. Is there a way the costs... Would would come down. I don't know well, what well, Ghana Health I, Service I, I can do about that. I have a lot of information on the cost, so I may be giving you wrong information in terms of cost. So when I have better information, I could we could discuss the cost. But I, I'm not too sure whether um, the public institutions are test. I mean, are taking money for mm. testing. I, I I need to check. Mm. Uh, I see. How, you know, we we some time ago heard about the RDTs. I mean, uh, which would make it easier. For, for people to test at home and, and quite affordable as well. That discussion, we didn't hear much about again. Uh, is, is there, what's the status of the RDT discussion, please? In fact, I am not too sure which ones that you remember for um, testing and all that is FDA that deals with it. I'm not too sure which ones have passed a test from FDA for which we are using. All I know is that uh, we're still doing the uh, nose and throat swaps for testing, especially in a public health defense laboratory. I see. Uh, well, thanks so much. But any any final word for the for the listening public in respect so of, of what all, we should be doing? I lay people's fears. Um, uh, when we have issues of uh, withdrawal, there are two things involved. Either there's a safety concern, uh, or probably because as uh, AstraZeneca themselves put it because of commercial reasons. As far as we know, we do not have any new safety concerns about AstraZeneca for which we have to be worried because these issues about thrombosis and so on came up quite uh, early in the, uh, in the, in the, in the, the, from the onset of the vaccination exercise, somewhere around 2021, and that was uh, dealt with. Uh, number two, COVID is not gone, and so we should not uh, think that... Uh, COVID is a thing of the past. We keep on hearing that the pandemic was declared over the pandemic. The pandemic has never been declared over. It's an emergency thing. The way we managed it uh, with emergency, right? where there was uh, where lockdowns and all kinds of restrictions and so on, that those things have changed. And that now we are routinizing COVID management and even the COVID vaccination. And so when we go out into uh, enclosed areas, indoor activities, we will still encourage that people keep on wearing masks and also make the hand hygiene and hand washing with soap and running water be a household thing for everybody uh, until COVID is declared over. I see. Thank you so much. But, but just before you go, I said that was the final one, but wh where can I get some of the vaccines if I have not uh, vaccinated uh, I'm not vaccinated yet. In fact, as we do, as we as, as we speak now, I mean, today, this um, this morning and afternoon, we were in the field. We started a periodic intensification of COVID vaccination alongside the uh, um, Child Health Promotion Week, African Vaccination Week celebration, and um, every every look and cranny. Uh, um, 
outreach services and health centers, hospitals are vaccinating now. And even beyond the week, that is from 5th to 9th, once you walk into any big hospital or public facility, you should be able to get COVID vaccine. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Doc. Uh, thank you so much for speaking to us. Uh, Dr. Kwame Amposachi, a new programs manager for the expanded program on immunization 